Welcome to the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast. It's Throwback Thursday. Today is a special introduction to this series of past podcasts that I like to bring back up because we've gotten an influx of more people downloading and I thought it would be good to introduce them to some of the past podcasts. And starting with the very first one, which is what we're going to have today. And this really explains where Invisible Wheelchair Podcast got its name and its start. So here we go, back to the past. This podcast was recorded on March 6, 2017. This is podcast number one. We got it started. The Invisible Wheelchair and what it's all about. So how did all this come about with this podcast? Well, as you know, I'm a family coach and I work with uh, families that are dealing with different anxieties, especially OCD. And I had a particular client, a teenage girl, who I'd been working with for a while. She came to me because of anger issues. She was getting, she was really close to being kicked out of school because of her anger and her anxiety. One afternoon we were in session with her and she was getting kind of wrapped up into the the anger at the time, a little bit of anxiousness. And as we're doing our work, like I said, she, she had, she would get with a teacher and a teacher, if she got on her at all, it, she would just come back at the teacher and it just escalated very quickly into anger and being sent to the principal's office. Well, in this particular afternoon, we were, we were doing some tapping and doing some work together. And as her anxiety kind of started climbing a little bit as we did the work, which it, that's normal for it to do, she blurted out this statement, I wish these kids could see my invisible wheelchair so they know what's going on up in my head and they'd stop bullying me and teasing me and giving, giving me so much trouble. And I, I think that that was such an amazing statement, especially for somebody of her age to come up with something so wise. But it, it, it took me back for a second. And I thought of how perfect of a description that particular statement or those words were. The invisible wheelchair. Because so many people out there, both kids and adults, suffer from these disorders, such as OCD, that really go un, uh, under the radar, uh, behind closed doors, closed mind, that only the person that's going through it and the family or the caregiving community knows about. In my own particular case with my daughter's OCD, as we'll talk about in her story coming up, you know, in one of the future podcasts here, you know, if people would not have known, they would not have been able to decide or figure out that she was suffering from OCD. Because she really, when she was out in public, if we could get her out in public, she wouldn't show any signs of OCD. She was very good at hiding it. That's one characteristic of an OCD person is that they very much want to hide these behaviors and things that they go through. But one of the things I have found in the work I've done working with different kids and different people is that most of the disorders, unless they are physically present in some way, uh, have this syndrome of the invisible wheelchair going on where people wouldn't know if they didn't see it. And because of that, we tend to have prejudice against those people. We take them as weird or strange or, or whatever. And it's not real. Um, most of the time, it's kind of a facade that the person puts on to cover what's going on. And so... I really wanted to make an awareness of this life that these people uh, deal with, 
by bringing up this podcast. And so this is kind of, well, it is. My passion is to help others that are going through this, and especially those that have this hidden wheelchair. You know, it's really going to be the focus of this podcast is OCD and the hidden stuff that's going on around that and, and other disorders like ADHD. You know, that's another one that that really plays an invisible wheelchair place because what's interesting I find about uh, like ADHD is, and, and really with all the disorders, in fact, there's a general, I think, kind of a common factor that the kids that are going through this are the people that are going through this. I, I can't always just stay on, on uh, kids necessarily, but the people that are going through this are usually very intelligent. And so most people look at them, and if they even know that they have ADHD, um, they believe they should be able to just figure it out and get over it. And what they don't understand is that there are things going on in the brain that are are causing this. Misfirings and chemical imbalances and all different sorts of things that are affecting these people. And when it comes down to it, when you look at any of the disorders, it is really and truly about anxiety. You know, because... Uh, and I, I'll talk about this in a future podcast, but it really comes down to that. You know, you do have some um, of the disorders that show themselves, pretty obviously, you know, and especially when somebody is actually crippled in the body, or uh, a lot of times somebody like uh, that has Down syndrome is going to show some of that. You can kind of tell it by looking at them. And you, with, you know, the high level of autism, you can also usually tell that there's different behaviors and actions that they're doing. But on a highly functioning autistic person, no, you can't. It, it, it's not impossible to, the, to kind of train die, I guess, or the family. But for others outside of that, um, you know, they're, they're hiding it and they're not letting it show. Um, it doesn't, sh you know, it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't show up in, that when there's a sickness involved or something of that sort. Um, so I really, you know, my mission is to try to bring awareness to this situation and to disorders and to the anxiety that dwells out there around this and how it's hidden. What I'm hoping through the awareness is that Others, other other kids, other people, can stop from jumping to conclusions, jumping to a judgment, and understand that there's more going on behind the scenes to most situations that are out there. You know, I I've seen kids at um, Walmart or at a store, you know, have a major meltdown, and I feel so bad. For the child going through it or the person going through it, but also for the, the family members that I, I know from myself. I've chased my daughter around Walmart before and worried that DSS was going to come, the police were going to come, the authorities of some sort were going to come and find out and take the, her away or, or do something to me. So I, I, when I see a, a child go through that, I really feel for that family and for that child or that person that goes through it because I know what could be going on inside that parent's head and probably the child's head too. You know, there's, there's feelings of embarrassment. Even though you know that it's something you didn't cause or didn't do. So... It, it just pains me to see that, and I, I in some way wish to be able to say something to them, to calm them, but I don't know what that means, what that words would be all the time. A lot of times I'll use my tapping, though. I'll, I'll actually tap for that person because there is such thing as called surrogate tapping, which can transfer 
energy from one person to another and, and possibly help them with supportive energy. Because it, it is, it's not the, the thing you want to go through when you're shopping at Walmart, is to have your child melt down. Now, I, I, I do say that, and this will step into an area I'll, I'll talk about in another podcast, that many times it does have some effect because of diet. I have seen people giving soda to a to an infant and then wonder why that infant breaks down later on with all the caffeine, the chemicals, the sugar, all of that stuff. So diet does play into that and so I always have to get that prejudice out of my mind and just really feel for the and, and give my energy to helping heal those that family. Because like I said, we don't know what's going on behind that the closed doors of that house and what's going on in that 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 mind that is up there. And so it is one of those things that I like to be able to really put my energy to help them. And again, through the awareness of this podcast to be able to do more because that in alone, the fact that it's so hidden can increase the anxiety, can increase the, the pain that the person is going through in dealing with it. You know, we, we're talking about things like OCD, which is where my story or my daughter's story comes from. We're talking about ADHD, which we'll talk about more in the future, but ADHD is probably one of the most di misdiagnosed um, disorders out there. There's all kinds of back and forth about that. And so in this podcast, The Invisible Wheelchair, it's, you know, it's defined for those that live a life of a disorder that, are, that does not show itself in a physical sense that can be seen by outsiders. And so they live in an internal world of anxiety, misery, depression, all of that. I hope to have this uh, podcast twice a month at least, at this, at least for the beginning time, because my life is still in a bit of a flux when it comes to some of the disorders that, has, that have hit our house. We still are dealing in my house with depression, and we're still dealing with some OCD uh, issues. So doing these podcasts, again, I want to get out the awareness, but I have to also understand that I have a lot going on here in my own home that I'm still dealing with. And if you are in that place of the invisible wheelchair, that anxiety, that disorder, I believe you'll understand how much it can tear a family apart. And so Hopefully you can understand that if I don't do it more than two times a month, that it's not because I don't want to. It's because the time that is being allocated for this can be taken up by some little incident at home. So again, I want to get the awareness out. Now, I want to also remind you that uh, there's a tapping recording after this that goes in coinciding with this Invisible Wheelchair podcast, so I don't want you to forget that. I also want to remind you to uh, leave a comment after this, because uh, that helps me to, to give me uh, fodder <laughs> for the next podcast. Also, I would love to hear your Invisible Wheelchair story, and if you have one and if you'd like to share it, go to InvisibleWheelchair.com to a thing called Tell Your Story. And finally, don't forget the tapping recording after this. You may want to use it. It can be very helpful to you. So I hope you've enjoyed this podcast and will join me for the next one. Thank you and have a great day. This concludes this podcast. We really would appreciate your comments. Simply leave a comment at www.invisiblewheelchair.com. There, 
you're able to submit a comment that will help us determine future podcasts. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the podcast, please email don at invisiblewheelchair.com. Remember, there is a corresponding tapping recording for each of the podcasts, with the exception of the interview podcast. You can find these tapping recordings and archive past podcasts at www.invisiblewheelchair.com. Finally, there is relief for OCD, and we at familyocd.com and focusedhealthyfamily.com can help you find that relief. Again, you can contact us through those sites, familyocd.com or focusedhealthyfamily.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Invisible Wheelchair Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Invisible Wheel One, that's the number one, or at Family OCD. So thank you for listening. Keep tapping and transcending your life to new heights.